Sakina yeah. in the building. So we we just gonna jump right into it, man. Um you you had a terrible week. Like you you terrible you, experience. All, all all the way around, man. So before we be, before we start, introduce yourself and let everybody know where you uh let everybody know where you're from. I'm Sakina Solomon. I'm from Dover, Delaware. All right, so you up in the northeast, um, man. You can keep all of that. I'm just saying, you, you, <laughs> everything, everything up there. Because I've I've been to Dover, I've been to Delaware, I've been to uh, all all that up in that corner. You can keep all of that, man. <laughs> you you can keep all of that. Well, listen, that's why I called myself trying to, you know, be a, a trucker, you know, to see something else. Uh, so you don't want to be stuck up there yourself, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I had I had big dreams of seeing things and traveling and, you know, it was really something that I, I went out on a leap for. You get what I'm saying? Oh, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so what's, what you was doing before you thought of getting into trucking? Warehouse. Oh, something like... You know, like, uh, food for things like... Hold on, I didn't hear you. I was home. I didn't hear you. What'd you say? Like warehouse work, warehouse work. I was home. Like you know, forklift things like that. Oh, okay, okay. Something like Amazon, uh, uh, yeah. Walmart stuff like that. Yeah. All right. So where where did the idea of uh, becoming a female trucker come into play? I honestly always wanted to do it. I got this weird gift that if I if I drive somewhere once, I know how to get there. Mm -hmm. I'm always the driver in the family. You know, I've always liked <laughs> big trucks. So it was something I always wanted to do. Um, what actually deterred me was the fact that I had children. So okay. now that they got of age, it was nothing holding me back. So I couldn't make no more excuses. So I put in my two weeks at my job. I packed my bags and I gave it all to CR England. All right, so see here's here's the here's the problem that I have with 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 New Jacks just giving it all up and just going to whatever company they you know the first company that they go with. Number one, mm -hmm. don't give up your day job because you're gonna need a you're gonna always always need a backup plan. You're gonna need a backup plan in case. Plan A don't uh, plan B. I'm going to say it backwards. If plan B don't work, you need to fall back on your plan A. You know what I'm saying? So that yeah. you can so that you can keep, you know, so that you can keep something going while you're getting your plan B to work. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. So see, my thing, I wanted to put my all into it. You know, like I felt oh, like no, 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 no. It's good that you put your all into it, but still have your plan A for backup. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. Okay. You know, have your plan A mm -hmm. for have your plan A for always have your plan A for backup, so that so that your plan B when you do put your all into it, you you know just in case. Like the situation that just happened to you, you'll have your yeah. plan. You'll have your plan A for backup, and you'll get a chance to recoup. You know, you get a chance to <sighs> woosa, and then get back at it yeah. while you still got your while you still got your plan A in a, in 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 motion, and then you can come right. back and you can come back and scratch the surface of of your plan B. So. Right. All right. So warehouse. So you, 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 you've been wanting to drive. Anybody in your family drive trucks or anything like that, or you just, or you just said no. You you just said bump it. I just want to drive a truck, and that's it. No, I, even the the going over the road interests me. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know. Even, you know, I'm not older, but even younger, you didn't see too many women in that industry. So, right. 
me being a tomboy, it was just like I had I, it was it, it, it. You know how something feel like it fits you. Mm-hmm. Like I can't be in an office. Mm-hmm. Like I, I I wasn't meant to be a health aide. It was just you know you. So the fact that I love driving and experiencing new things and. What? My mother used to make a joke of it, like, I can see you driving a truck one day <laughs> because I've always had bigger vehicles, like, so, so you, you know, I even have brothers that thought I couldn't do it. So you say you, uh, so you say you had kids, uh, how, how many kids you have and how, how did your, how, how did your significant other feel about you getting into, uh, getting into the industry? Actually, he's very supportive. My husband is very supportive of the decision, not only me, but him as well. He has his permit and is looking to get into the industry. So eventually in the future, hopefully we can become a team drive. Okay. But yes. um, we have six together um, and they're excited too. My my youngest is seven. He says that mommy's going to bring home a, a transformer. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, the Optimus Prime truck, the 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 Peterbilt. That's, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up, man. So, so Shanika, uh, so Shanique, Shanika, Shanique, Sh- Shanika, right? Shakim. Shakim. Do you got like a do you, do you got like a a, a a nickname that I can call you? Uh, Kina. Kina. Okay, that's that's ba- there. We go. Kina. Okay. All right. So Kina, mm-hmm. man. Um so did you go to school before you went to CR England or you went to CR England to get your license? Well, my initial plan was to go to um school mm-hmm. because at the same token like you know, you don't actually know that you can do this. You might tell yourself you can. So my initial plan was to go to school, but um, the day I was supposed to actually start, they had lost the contract with who I was going to school with. Um, so it was like, do I wait? You know what I mean? Do I do I let this stop me? So when I re- when I reached out to CR England, you know. They said they had an opening. They told me some things. I thought they were a good company, what and I was, hopped on a bus. What 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 was the conversation between you and uh and the recruiter? We 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 need to know because you know the recruiters at companies like CR England, CRST, uh, and others like them like the like the like the water you know like to pour the milk on thick. And then when you guys yes. actually get there, it's 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 all sour. It's, nothing like it's it. all sour. It's yes. nothing like what they tell you. So what was so what was the initial conversation that you had with the with the recruiter? Okay, the reason that I had initially initially went with CR England is because they told me it was a three week program. Mm-hmm. Now the school that I was going to was a four week program, mm-hmm. but it was only four if for the first week of classroom if you didn't have your permit. Mm-hmm. So I already had the permit. So I thought, you know, this would be an opportunity that I won't have to go for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I would still have the same goal that I had. Mm-hmm. Um, they told me that it would be classroom and, tr- and train and driving to learn how to drive the truck. Um, he told me the first 30 days I would be gone. No, actually, he told me after class, I would be brought, I would be sent back home to get my CDL hard copy, mm-hmm. and then I will come back, and then I will be out for 30 days right. doing my training. Right. So the, 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 initial, the initial schooling is, is three weeks. It's supposed to be. Is, okay, so the initial schooling is, is, is supposed to be three weeks, and then after you, then after you leave from 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 there you go back you you go back to your home state and get your and get your hard copy of your uh of your of your license and then after you get your yeah. hard copy of your license you come back and then you go out for about 30 days with with a trainer yeah okay 
So did you so did you get your license through them or no? Yes. I did get my license through them. Oh, okay. But it's not a three it's not a three week class. Okay. You come in Monday and you do paperwork all day. Drug testing, you know, proper documentation, things are there. Mm-hmm. By Tuesday, you're doing pre trip and by Wednesday you're in a truck. And by Tuesday of next week, you're doing testing to, to get the CDL. So there is Damn. no school. Damn. So this sounds like a a, a, a three-day sound like a three day school. deal. Sound like a three day Listen, deal in the three weeks. For five thousand dollars, I thought you would at least do some real schooling like Especially for someone who's never stepped foot in this industry. But no, they teach you. They don't even teach you how to drive the truck. They teach you how to get the CDL. Right. Like, I know they say, you know, in time you'll learn how to drive and all this. But, you know, to really handle this vehicle, how they do it, like, I, in all reality, like, I probably went on a truck for three hours. Fuck. <laughs> I probably drove the truck for three hours, but granted, you know, me being a self-taught, like, learn, like even with trying to learn in cap, like I, I spoke to my class liaison and told her, you know, she said she will put me with a different person and that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. And then I got with another instructor at the last minute and he had a doctor's appointment. So I didn't even get the time the other students got. Gratefully, you know, I put my best foot forward and I got it, but it was just no support. It was just, this is what it is. You're going to do it or you're not. It's a dog eat dog world in that facility. Right. Okay. So, all right. So, Let's get so let's get caught up to all of the BS that that went down with you. So uh, let let me first say that you know my condolences, or you, yeah. your my my condolences to you. Uh, you know your grandmother your grandmother has passed while you was in the, in the school. The day I passed my test, yes, the day I passed my test. You know, so I, I my condolences, my my condolences goes out to you for that. Um, but your your grandmother, your your grandmother passed. So of course, you know you you want to get back home so that you can you yeah. know be a part of the you know be a part of the um of the of the arrangement for your grandmother's home going. So yeah. with all that's going on, what you on on the outside of your on a, on the outside of that, you come back. You tell CR England, "Hey, you know my grandmother passed, and I would like to, you know, I, I would like to get you know get home, so I can be there with my family." And CR England told you what? Well. Before I get to what they told me, my delivery wasn't even to go home for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I asked them if I could go, when they sent me home for my hard copy, Mm -hmm. could they send it on this particular day so I could at least attend the funeral? Right. Okay. They told me that if I left, they would take my CDL and I would have to start all the way over. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. How the hell? First thing first, how the hell can they take your CDL? You already got it, right? See, I, being a a newcomer, not knowing if they are or aren't capable of doing that. No. But that was the impression they left. No. So. They they, they not. Because once you got, once you got that paper in your hand that says you, you know, that says, you know, you got your CDL. But see, they didn't even give us any paper. They they did the testing like they test you like we don't go to a DMV. Mm-hmm. They have people there that are the examiners, mm-hmm. and they oh. that's how it goes. So they didn't even give us papers. 
oh, or anything. See, they doing some sneaky shit. Oh, uh, listen, they are because even in, even in some of the sessions, like some some instructors don't even make you do all of it. Mm-hmm. Like they'll say, "Give me a few things off the truck." Okay. You do that? Okay. Let me see you do backing. Okay. Let's go on the road. Or some of them didn't even go on the road. Like I heard story, like other people that were in the class with me that the person actually took them, let them drive out of the complex Mm -hmm. up to where they got something to eat and got something to eat and came back and got a CDL. Wow. This sounds like. But me, (laughs) not getting any help. I'm not saying I wanted it that way, but I didn't even get the help to get it how, how I was supposed to. You get what I'm saying? Like, granted, I studied so pre-trip, whatever they threw at me, I was ready for. But I did it on my own with no help from the instructors. And this was supposed and and this was supposed to be a three week program. Uh oh. Yes. Oh, okay. I thought I lost you there for a minute. All right. So this was supposed no, to be. No, you didn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This, this was supposed to be a three week program. Yes. That 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 turned out to be only a, week a only, only a week. And lucky and luckily yeah. for you, you was able. Now let me ask you this: Did you um, did they did they did they do you have your CDL like do you have it now after all of this or yes no? oh, I do okay. have my CDL okay my physical heart <laughs> oh, okay so again this sounds like some sneaky slash shit that they doing so they like if you don't if you don't uh, appease by the situation they can hold the paperwork from you to get your license Right. Yes. yes. Wow. Okay. Um, okay, so again, you you got your license, your your grandmother passed, yes. you you asked them, yes. Hey, can I, you know, get some time off? And then they they said they was gonna if you would have did that, they would have took your license. I lost everything. They would have took your license, yes, and, I would have to- and you had to come back and do the whole schooling program all over again. So would that would yes. would that sound like they was going to double dip you? So say like yes. say like they they got you for the first five, and now that you had to come yes. back and do it all over again, they was going to hit you up with another five. Yeah. That's what it seemed like to me too, which is why I stayed. Oh, I am so sorry that they put you through that, man. That, that, that. I I know that was hurtful, and I know that was painful. Um, it was. That was the, and that was. That's that's not even cool, Cr England. Mm-hmm. That's that's some bullshit. I mean, you lied to this young lady, you know, during the recruitment pro, uh recruitment phrase. And then a tragedy happens, you know, a tragedy happens and you force her to you, you force her to make a, a, a hard life decision. You know, and I'm sure that decision, I'm sure that decision didn't come lightly uh, when it that didn't. happened. What, uh, what was the conversation, if I might, if I may ask, between you and your family on on that I just informed them that what the job said and them being supportive, they didn't want me to just quit. So, you know, we sent our loves through the air. Wow. Yeah. Again, man, I, I, I am, I am definitely sorry to, um, to hear that, that they put you through that. Um, you got your license now, now yeah. on the flip side, now you got your license and more trouble lies ahead. So 
Yes. What, what, you know, after you experienced that, that should that already gave you red flags on whether or not you wanted to continue with the company. Um, yeah. Did they, now as far as getting your CDL and you decided, you know, you decide to leave the company, of course they're going to come after you for their money. Was there a contract that you had to sign prior to, you know, going through the school and everything? Or was there like a, a grant that you had to sign? Because now, now these companies that's that's offering CDL schooling, they can't they can't uh, do what they did back in the day. They actually have to if you quit, they actually have to let you go and not mess with your license. They can only just you know mess with your credit. Yeah, it was it was a contract um, that if you stayed for a year, the day would pay for the tuition. Mm -hmm. Um. But unfortunately, our relationship <laughs> was sour before it even got started. <laughs> so I just have to deal with that, how it comes. Mm -hmm. But there was a contract. But that was even another thing. Like, they don't give you a copy of the contract. So I don't even know completely what's in what's the contract, the even if I, yes, if I had a time limit to be able to get out of it. Like, it's just no information up front. All right, all right, uh, Ke uh, Kina, Kina, Kina. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Kina. So, Kina, man, um, you decided that that red flag was enough. You, you, you figured. Actually, no. Okay. Granted, that hurt me, but mm -hmm. I said I was going to stick it out. Okay. So now I'm waiting for a mentor. Oh, okay. I'm at this point, they have us in a hotel. We're waiting for the mentors. You know, it's one to come available. Now, me, I didn't have a specific male, female, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just was, I, I mean, you made me, I had to suck this one up, put on my big girl pants. This is for the greater good. Mentor. Okay. Um, now, where where are where where are you? Where where are you? Where where they have you? Uh, where they have you stationed at? While you doing all this waiting? Salt Lake City, Utah. Salt Lake City, Utah. So mind you guys, she's like clear across America. <laughs> so right. So you're clear across America. So you're in Salt Lake City, Utah, waiting on wait waiting on a trainer. God damn it, man. Mm -hmm. You uh you in Salt Lake City, Utah, waiting on a trainer. While while you there yeah. waiting on a trainer, what's going on? Well, the first an issue, I tried to get switched to another facility um, because they said it was easier getting a mentor because at this point I'm just sitting in a room and my feelings because I lost my grandma. I can't see that. I can't go to the funeral. Mm -hmm. I can't be there for my family, mm -hmm. you know. So um, my thought process was instead of stewing in it, you know, get to work so I can be active and not just you know they say the uh, idle mind is the devil's playground exactly so the the men the mentor coordinator said that he was going to have a supervisor call me um to get me moved never heard from a coordinator never heard from the the men the, the supervisor hmm. so now we get into another week finds out that now that coordinator isn't my coordinator no more and I have a new coordinator, some guy named Victor or something. Okay. So now we're at this point he tells me, um, he's the new per he's my new men coordinator, you know, because I call matter of fact, let me backtrack. The reason I called again was because we were supposed to get paid every week. Right. So when Tuesday came and I'm looking for the pay for the orientation because you know, I left with a paycheck, mm -hmm. you know, and that was the money that I utilized while I was there, you know, and home. Right. So I'm looking for this now because I'm here for a month or three weeks. Money's low. Need to increase. No money. Mm -hmm. So I called them and I'm saying, I said, well, I was supposed to get something today because, you know, the pay period ended on the 30th. When I did this, it was before the 30th. So she says to me, well, we hold checks for two weeks. Mm. 
Wait, 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 wait a minute. So now. Wait, wait. <laughs> you you just now telling me that y'all hold chess for two weeks, but but y'all yes. but y'all didn't tell me that. Y'all y'all didn't inform me that y'all hold chess for two weeks. So now I'm thinking I'm supposed to get paid and and have it mm-hmm. li- and, and have a li- at least a little bit of change. Now you guys got yeah. me sitting here in this hotel. Broke, lonely, and pissed. What's going? What's going yeah. on with that? I have no clue. So after that, they give you. Well, another thing was they would give you twenty five dollars a day while you're sitting in the hotel. Twenty now five dollars a day. Yes. Okay. To one, eat. Oh, okay. That's, look, that's all that was. Okay. So hold on, right quick. So they they figured that they paying for the hotel. So the hotel is all right, but. Twenty-five dollars a day. Yeah, uh, the, the whole day. You you supposed to spend twenty-five dollars for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. let, and you only get that for four four or five days. Okay, so let's let's break that twenty-five dollars down. You 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 already fit. You already figured that you know a Denny's a Denny's breakfast is like. Seven or eight dollars, and then yeah. lunch. Well, you a bag of fucking chips, and then a Denny's dinner is at least twelve dollars. So mm-hmm. the next, so the next day, you, you, you broke with chump change. Waiting for your, waiting for your twenty five dollars. Waiting yes. for another twenty five dollars to be deposited where in a in in a cash card or something. Yes. Then after that, they told you, they tell us from $25, when you, after you got done waiting five days, it will go to $90. Okay. But what they don't tell you is the $90 is on the next pay period. Okay? So you don't even get that money now. So now you have nothing until you get paid. So they got... They 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 got you hemmed up in Salt Lake City, yes. Utah. Again, broke, lonely, and pissed. Yeah. So when 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 are we supposed to be? When are we supposed to be getting our money? Like our money from from the orientation pay or whatever. They didn't Two even weeks. wait a minute. They did. Why you was waiting? They they didn't, they, give, they didn't give you. Wait, they they didn't even offer you transportation back home while you waiting for your trainer? No, they didn't. I could not leave the facility. I couldn't leave the room, let alone the. I couldn't leave. So what, what actually happened after this conversation? I have a family emergency. Okay. Um. I call them like at this time, listen, I've already sucked up this. I'm not going to make it to that, but this I have to be home for. Like I right. have to get there. Right. So, so this time I'm serious. I'm emotional. I'm crying. Like it's that detrimental that I get home. They say, well, company policy, we can't send you home. We need you available 24 hours a day. What? Okay. Stop. So, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Number one, you a new driver. You you like fresh out of fucking school. So how they how they they don't have no they don't have no regular motherfucking drivers that they need twenty four hours a day. Yes, I mean, you a new student. You can't even you can't even how you gonna be available? Y'all can't Still, even find y'all even can't even find, y'all can't even find a motherfucking yeah. trainer. Oh, see, I'm getting pissed now. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you you talking to them on the phone? They come back with that bullshit, and you say, "Well, now I tell them about the pay issue. Like y'all didn't give me no money, so I'm just stuck here." He uh, he says, "Well, we can't give you no money to go home. Call your family or take a Uber." Oh. oh. Take an Uber from Salt Lake City, Utah, 
to Dover, Delaware. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm speechless right now. Wait a minute. I'm speechless right now, and I got a damn tear running down my eye. You, this dude, no, no, no type of compassion, no type of shit. At all. Just tells you, well, if you need to go home, have your family get you home, or take a fucking Uber. Yeah. This actually came out to do. What was what's the dude's name? What's his name? What's his name? Victor. What what's his name? Victor. 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 Victor Colola or something. Victor Canola. Yeah. Bruh, you was the fucking worst guy at CR England right now. I hope you hear. I, I hope you hear my podcast, bruh, because that bullshit that you pulled on this young lady right here. You you wouldn't have never got that off on me, my dude. You the day the, when that came out your mouth, oh, I would have I would have been packed up and I would have been gone right then and there. I would have said fuck well, y'all. That, but that was my intention, but they knew I didn't have any money. So now I'm in Utah. They're not offering me any way home. I have my belongings and things of like that. And also, I didn't want to keep being charged for the rum knowing that I was quitting. Because from my understanding, and with the tuition, they ask for rum reimbursement if you leave. So if you, wait, they, man, CR England is on some dirty shit. So if you was to leave the room, they would they, they would have hit you up for the room too? Yes, if you leave the company. They asked for reimbursement for the the room and tuition. Fuck you. Try, yeah, try getting that shit out of me on that. I but man, see, and they and they wonder why people do fucked up shit. The the, the they wonder why people do fucked up shit. I'm you know I I I I, I seen this one video where somebody actually fucked up a a hotel room because of that because of some shit like that. And then they then they turn around and they try to hit them up for you know trying to hit them up for the room fee. That's why some that's why some hotels be like, oh well, we need your credit card for what? Uh, we mm-hmm. we need to we no we need a credit card on file. No, the company is paying for the for the room. Why do you need my credit card for? <laughs> you know so right. <sighs> Kena, Ken, man, this 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 this. This is just get. This is just going from bad to fucking worse, quick, fast, in a hurry. It went from zero to a hundred real fast. So, after you, af- after he told you all of that, you you already knew in your mind it's it's time to go. It's time to go. You you yeah. already with all the red flags that you seen before you even set foot in the truck. You knew it was yeah. time. You knew it was time to go. So, uh, unfortunately, you you got you know you were stuck out in Salt Lake City, Utah. You're you're broke. You don't have no money coming yeah. from from them. And and I know I called you, um, and you during the time that I talked to you, you was you was in the uh, preparations of. You know, getting getting people together to help you get home. So, from from all that, from that conversation, when did you start to get the ball rolling and getting home? And and what and you know what did you do to to make that process happen? Um. Well, I I shipped my stuff home so I wouldn't have to carry it around Utah mm-hmm. because at this point I have nowhere to put my things. I have no way to get home. So um, I went to FedEx and I asked my mother because she sent me some money to send my stuff home. Right. And my mother's on a budget herself. So I'm trying to figure it out. Luckily, um, I actually went to the police station 
to try to get some help because they weren't sending me home. They they left me stuck out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I also put up an a, a ad in a very supportive group. Um, she trucking. She trucking. And, she trucking. That's what's up. Yes, and, Shout out to and, Sheree and she and, trucking. And um, trucking sisterhood as well. Um, to find out if it was any ladies or on, on the West Coast that could have a ride along that I could get home. Mm-hmm. Um, so I tried every possible way. Gratefully, uh, a guardian angel um, got me a plane ticket last night and got me on a plane. Shout out that guardian angel if you if you want. Thank you. She know who she is. I'm sure she did it out the kind of as her heart. Is she? Would is she part of the she trucking group? 